Hey everybody, welcome back to the YouTube tutorial. My name's Insert Name here, and today we'll be demoing a uh, photo mode. Uh, but not just any other photo mode. The great part about this photo mode is it actually allows for custom um, post processing settings to be applied. You can apply any custom post processing effect to the camera, and it also allows us to add a resolution scaler so the player can actually adjust the resolution of uh, the screenshot and then also it allows you to cut out everything except the player model or any other model you'd like um that's really just a loose description so i think to describe this better i'll actually go and uh, open it up and uh, show you it so if we go here, and uh, if I press P on my keyboard, I'm actually in a free view cam. And then I can press F on my keyboard to bring up this HUD. Can adjust the bloom, the vignette, and also the resolution scale. Can close down the HUD with F again. And also, I can go, press X on my keyboard. It will go and take a screenshot, which is saved in a custom folder in my documents, which is your game name screenshots and also even though we can just take a normal uh, screenshot we can actually take this further and toggle this transparency and if I go and press X and uh, go to the folder see it actually takes a transparent screenshot which is really cool and this allows for some really cool custom artwork so here we just have a basic third person uh, example template. If I hit play, you can see, yeah, it's just a normal third person DP. Um, and this is just an HDRI, it's nothing really special. I did a tutorial on how to use HDRIs in uh, Unreal Engine, so I'll have that link down below. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create the camera that actually flies around. Uh, how are we going to do that? Well, simple. Just want to open your content browser, right click, and click New Blueprint Class. We're going to create a character. We have concept, but I just really like how the character moves and generally all the extra features of a character. Uh, so we're just going to call this BP uh, Photo Mode Controller. Um, before we open that up, we'll go add extra inputs. Um, so how do you create extra inputs? You just go to the top left, edit, project settings. Scroll all the way down till you see input under engine. And um, the thing is, uh, if I open access and action mappings, you'll see we already have a few uh, mappings thanks to using the third person templates. Um, we're going to add a few action mappings and a few axis mappings already. So the axis mappings, we're going to add a new one. Uh, it will be called Move Up. And what this will do is it allows our camera to move up and down on the world, um, independent of where the camera is looking. Uh, so you want to make the first one, E. Uh, scale 1 is correct. Then you want to add. Then you want to make this one Q, and the scale should be the opposite, minus 1. And under action bindings, you want to bring up, uh, show, hide, HUD. And you also want to create, a uh, take screenshots, and, uh, camera mode. And uh, for show and hide HUD, I'm going to use F. For take screenshot, I'm going to use X. And for camera mode, I'm going to use P uh, to go to photo mode. Uh, so when you're done with that, now we can go to our new map. Uh, go to our photo mode controller. This is where we're going to set up all the fids for the camera pod. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go to the use control, the rotation pitch, uh, the yaw, and you also want to turn on roll. Then you want to go to your capsule component, set the capsule radius to 24, 
and uh, 24. This will act like kind of a collision for the camera so it can't clip through geometry, which is really cool. And then you want to go to your character movement. And we're going to set the gravity scale to a zero, so it isn't affected with gravity. And break friction factor. Um, I'm going to put this something uh, high. It really doesn't matter. It should just be a pretty high number. So like uh, the thing that's flying, the camera just instantly breaks. So you can be more precise with camera movement. Um, and then we also want to change this default land movement mode to flying default water movement mode to flying uh, you can just compile that save that's generally everything we have to do here oh wait we actually have to add a component uh, this will be of type camera and uh, this camera component will be the camera that actually flies around and applies the post processing settings so when we're done with that we want to go to the event graph and now we want to bind all the inputs. Um, so let's start with forward and backwards and left and right movements. Uh, so you want to right click and uh, move forward. You want to get move forward. And this axis value, you want to go uh, set uh, input movement. Add movement inputs. I always get confused with that one. Um, this whole direction we're actually going to plug in a get forward vector, Add, and then we want to plug this into get control rotation. And the reason why we're doing this is this means the player will go forward um, based on where the camera is looking, which is a really good. Uh, so let's get control rotation. We're just gonna go and plug this in a get right vector. And in this get right vector, we're gonna go and use another add movement input. And then we're gonna plug in a move right axis event. Let's plug that in. Uh, that means now we can move forward and backwards, which is really cool. Uh, but we still have to do a few other inputs. So let's start with our move up and down uh, independent of the camera. So you want to search move up axis event. And uh, of course you want to uh, add movement input. And we're not going to actually do any vector math here. We're just simply going to put one on the Z. Which means it will go up and down doesn't care where we're looking with the camera, which is precisely what we want. Uh, now that means we have the look up and down, oh, not the look up and down, the move left, right, front, backwards, and move up and down movement. But we still want the camera look movement. So what you want to get is just get the look up, and then you also want to get the turn uh, axis event. And uh, what you want to do is... Uh, Add controller. So for lookup, we're going to use add controller pitch input. And for input axis turn, we're going to use a your. So add your. Add controller your input. It's perfect. And now the thing is, this works for mouse movement. Uh, but the moment the player actually wants to use a controller here, it's, it's not going to work out well, because uh, by default, Unreal Engine, um, when you do this way of calculating movement with a controller, it actually is not frame rate independent, which means if the player has a higher frame rate, the controller will actually move quicker, which is uh, funny that the controller doesn't do it, but the controllers do it but uh, the mouse doesn't so we're gonna have to make a version of this with uh, better logic so you want to go and use look up rate and also get a, a turn rate and what you want to do is you want to take this axis value and you want to multiply it and there's this multiply we're gonna add another pin so the first thing is actually going to be 
promotes it to a variable. Um, we're gonna name this uh, smooth mental camera 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 <laughs> movement uh, speed. It's perfect. And this camera movement speed you want to get just move there. And then this bottom one, uh, we're actually gonna use get world delta second, which means it will get the last time from the last frame, which means it will um it will work based on what frame rate the player is, so uh there won't be inconsistent uh, controller movement. And this lookup rate you're just gonna uh actually you can just go it's down here, take these two drag over them and uh, control W means you uh, duplicate them and then what we're gonna do is the pitch is gonna go into lookup rate just plug that in and this add controller your input we can actually just copy this code because it's really the same and then you're just gonna plug this all in together um, awesome. This means uh, that the player can actually move with his controller uh, independent of the frame rate. So this camera movement speed, we're going to set this to about 45. I think that's what it's by default. And yeah, that's perfect. Now, there's another thing, right? Where we can make the camera switching type effect. Uh, but before we can do that, we're going to have to go and go to our third person blueprint or any controller you're using. So we're going to third person BP, blueprint, third person character. Okay, now that you're on the third person character BP, you want to go and we want to get our camera mode action event. So when the camera mode button is pressed, we want to go and spawn a new actor from class. The actor we're gonna spawn is BP Photo Mode Controller. And this collision had the lead override, we want to uh, try to adjust location but always spawn. So if it ever collides in the place it wants to spawn, it's just gonna still spawn but move it a bit. Spawn transform, we're actually gonna use our follow camera and the get world location. Uh, not location, you want to get world transform and then you want to plop that into the spawn transform so it's gonna spawn where our cam player's camera is currently and here's the thing right uh, we want to take over this photo mode controller but before we can do that we're just gonna make our lives easier so what you want to do is you want to make a begin play and in this begin play we're gonna go uh, cast to player controller and the object reference is gonna be a uh, get get controller uh, which means now we don't have to go and use get player controller uh, it's just better code wise uh, cast to player controller we're just gonna take this as player controller and promote it to a variable Compile and save that. Uh, and here at the spawn actor BP photo mode controller, this return value uh, is actually where all the fun starts. Uh, but for, before we can really like make the fun start, uh, we're gonna go to BP photo mode controller, go add uh, two variables. Uh, we're gonna add a third person. So the character. So this is the character we want to go back to when we're done the photo mode. And um, what you want to do is you want to go search for person character. Awesome. But I'll save that. So this is the part we want to control again. And while we are here, we're actually gonna avoid another cast. So we're just going to make this player, I'll just rename this, didn't really listen to my input, uh, so I just want to make this player controller, and just fix that, and this variable type it's just going to be player controller, 
object reference. It's perfect. Uh, this is really important. These. This is where all the fun's gonna happen. So go back to your third person character. And what you want to do is uh, you want to get a reference to us or self. Uh, and we're gonna take this return value and set third person character. The third person character would be us. We're setting ourself here so we know what to go back to when we're done with photo mode. And then also what we want to uh, set is we want to set that player controller so we don't have to go and cast again. It's just easier. So uh, I want to go and uh, drag off this return value again and get player controller and set it. And we're going to set it to uh, as player controller. We have that. Uh, that's perfect. And then what we're going to do is we're finally going to uh, possess this object. Um, this means we're actually going to move our control from this pawn to that one. Which means we're going to control the camera now. And uh, what you want to do is you want to drag the player controller in here. And the in pawn is the pawn we want to control. You want to go and drag in this return value. If you want, you can just double click on this blue line to add reroute notes just to uh, make the code cleaner. Blueprints are pretty hard to read, so it's good if you can uh, clean up the code. Uh, when that's done, we can just compile and save. Now we want to go to the photo mode character. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get the camera. Uh, the camera uh, action event. Uh, camera mode yeah and the input action here what we want to do is we want to go and possess uh, just want to tick off context sensitive and now uh, we want to possess the pod again uh, the pod we lost control of so we want to drag in your third person character pop that into the target uh, Oh yeah, that's not, you don't want to plug that in target, you want to plug that into the in pawn. The target is our uh, player controller that we uh, made. So that's great, now we possess it, there's one problem. Uh, this object still stays, which isn't what we want. Uh, so what you want to do is you just want to destroy actor, which is our self. And we can compile and save. And the thing is, I think now we should be able to switch for easy P. And awesome, yeah. Now we can fly up and down, go anywhere we want, go down to the ground. And we're independent now from play. We had P, yeah, we're back. So you can switch around, and that's pretty cool. Um, but this is where I'm gonna cut this uh, part of the video because you have the basic. Uh, Screenshot system in place of moving the camera around, setting up the scene, and that's pretty nice. Uh, in the next part, we're going to add the uh, post-processing features, um, add the resolution scaler, and also, most importantly, add a green screen effect, which uh, cuts out everything except the player, so uh, your community can make really cool screenshots. But without further ado, guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like the content, please subscribe. Uh, hit like if you liked the video. Hit dislike if you didn't. And uh, that's really all. Good night, everybody.